This video features potentially dangerous crafting methods, tools, and or supplies. This video is not intended for children. It is intended for mature crafters who understand how to use these supplies. Hello everyone, this is Rachel or Clanthiel Tan, and today we're going to be turning two spam cans into little benches with a cushion top for one six scale dolls. If any of you guys have seen the steampunk house I did a while back for my two USDs that I had at the time, this is for that house. So the supplies we're going to be using are the spam cans. If you were only going to be making one, you would only need one can. We got some stuffing here for the upholstery. We got a needle and some thread for the one and some yarn for the other. Craft scissors and fabric scissors. You don't have to have the fabric scissors but you do have to have the craft scissors because you can't cut cardboard with fabric scissors. And then this is the fabric I would like to use for uh, pumpkins little bench and this is the one I would like to use for peppers. First step is going to be getting these wrappers off. <music> think these look quite cool just like this especially since they're going in a steampunk themed room now if you did not want them to be this color this is the point at which you can paint them you could also soak them in water to help get the last of this off I would like to get going with this tutorial so I'm not going to do that right now but if you like this gold color and you don't plan on painting this uh, we're not going to be changing this any further, so if you change your mind later, you can always go back and soak them to help get the last bit of this off, or paint them, or anything like that later. I forgot to mention in the little intro, but of course, these have been scrubbed clean thoroughly several times. The little spots you see in the bottom are where they began to rust from being washed so many times. Um, and if you notice any lingering grease later, again, as long as you don't paint them, you can wash them as many more times as you like, even after this project is over. So the next step is going to be tracing the outline of the can. And we're going to be making a pencil mark around the outside of the can. And then you can see there's a little bit of an edge on the side. So we're going to be making a line around the outside and then we're going to be cutting it this much further in twice. So twice as deep as this little lip is, is how much further in from the line we're going to be cutting it. Not only because we want it to be sitting inside on this tiny little lip here, but also because we're going to be covering it with fabric and that's going to add bulk so we can't cut it exactly the size of this. I just cut it the way I told you guys I would in the last clip and then I kept trying it in and trimming where it seemed like it needed it until it fit a little bit loosely with some wiggle room into both and I'm trying to keep them straight just in case the cans are warped a little bit because I'm not sure that these are interchangeable. Next step is getting some stuffing onto these. I like to use a little bit of glue to keep the stuffing in place and then covering it with the fabric. I know it's really tempting to add a bunch of stuffing at this stage but if you put on too much 
it can look cartoonish when you're done with your finished piece of furniture and it can be difficult for the dolls to sit on your cushion that you've made. It should be about this thick and evenly spread over the whole surface. That's part of why I find the glue so helpful. Um, also make sure you're pretty sparing with the glue because otherwise it can seep up through to the top of your upholstery and aside from being kind of gross and crunchy, it can also cause the cushion to look differently in spots where the glue comes up and we don't want that. Much happier with the results from the more fuzzy material than I am from the piece of t-shirt I used for this one so I do recommend that if you decide to follow this tutorial that you use some fuzzy material if you have some and don't forget that this part can be redone as many times as you want if you decide to redecorate the dolls room that you're making this for you can just cut a new piece of cardboard and start over so we got two more steps for these little cushions. I'd like to add some beads. You can use small buttons for this, but I knew where my beads were and I didn't know where my buttons were, so we're using beads. This is just to kind of sculpt the cushion a little bit. I think it serves two purposes. It helps it look more finished and or realistic and it also can help the doll sit on it without sliding off because as you can see this almost looks like a water droplet right now it rises it's thickest in the middle and then goes down to the edges unfortunately if you put a doll on this it's going to try to slide off and especially since these are for ball jointed dolls i especially don't want them sliding off and falling on their faces damaging their face ups and whatnot so I'm thinking probably six dots will look most natural. I'm going to begin with this one because that's the color I have in my needle. So we're just going to be doing, trying to evenly space them and just doing three on each side of these buttons coming up from the bottom, coming through putting the needle up where you want the little button or bead to be, putting the button through, and then coming back down. Alright, I was just checking to make sure the needle will go through the bead. Sometimes you need to choose smaller needles or beads with bigger holes if you test the bead and it won't go over the needle. This is what they look like after the addition of the beads. If you don't have beads or small buttons, you can also just do the same step without them and just sew tiny little X's. I would recommend sewing like from here to here, going through it twice, and then here to here, going through it twice, and then moving on to the next X. I knotted off the thread after every single bead just because um, I've had some trouble with beads coming off of projects in the past and I like knowing that if one of them comes off all of the other ones aren't going to fall off. I also think it makes it easier to not have to pull the thread taut the whole time but again you don't have to do that if you don't want to. At this point if you felt like it you could add a little ruffle or a row of lace along here if you wished. I don't want to do that. So we have one final step here. We're going to take what's left over of the cardboard from earlier and we're going to trace the bottom of the box and then I'm going to peel the layers of cardboard apart 
and we're going to use one layer glued onto the bottom of this cushion and one layer glued onto the bottom of this cushion just to finish off the bottom so when you lift the cushion, it this one didn't come out looking too bad, but this one looked pretty gnarly, as you can see. And since we already put this much time into it, we might as well just finish off the bottom and make it look finished. This is what it looks like. You could, of course, use scrapbook paper, cardstock, just straight up paper, pretty much anything paper-like that was thin enough that you wanted to use on the bottom of the cushions, but I thought it would be cool to not bring in any more supplies. Now, unfortunately, my USD bodies are still coming in on order. They are out, they're like being shipped, but I don't know what country they're in or how much longer it'll take for them to get here. So I have my Disney Store Mulan here to demonstrate how they look. They're com for a Barbie sized doll, they're comfortable for one person to sit on. They don't look excessively wide, they don't look excessively narrow, so I'm sure they would work for the more chunky uh, childlike USDs as well as the more mature ones that tend to be more delicate looking. And I think the height feels pretty natural too for something like this. You could of course add a buckle hanging down to help you lift this you know, attach it in here, especially under this piece of cardboard, and then give you something to pull on when you want to remove the cushions. And you can customize this however you want to, but this is the basic tutorial for it. Overall, I am much more satisfied with the one made out of fuzzy fabric, so in the future, I would definitely probably only use fabric that is more fuzzy but this isn't this doesn't look too shabby either you should be able to follow this tutorial for pretty much any metal can that has one of those little pull tabs that you pull the whole top of the can off so like a tuna can i think i've seen like some green beans and pineapple chunks with that of course that'll give you differing heights and whatnot but you could even make you know, with like a pineapple can, that might be a good size for an MSD to have a little, you know, side table with a removable lid. You could, of course, not make a cushion for the top and cover it with some kind of like contact paper that looked like marble or wood to give yourself a little decorative side table. Pretty much anything you want. Um, this is very customizable, so I hope you guys have fun with this. If you make this tutorial and you feel like taking a photo and posting it, I have an Instagram on Calatheal Tan there too, as well as on YouTube, pretty much any platform, eBay, um, Tumblr, I'm Calatheal Tan everywhere. So tag your posts that you make if you decide to make one with Calatheal Tan Can Challenge. So I'm hoping I'll get to see a couple of people try this, but even if not, I had a great time making this. If you want to see more content like this, please like and comment on this video. This helps both of us out because it helps YouTube better suggest content that you actually want to watch if you like and comment on the content you like, and it helps out my channel because it shows YouTube that people are willing to engage with my content. If you want to see more of my content specifically, you can of course subscribe. I have a Facebook group that is open to anyone 13 years of age or older, and I just post there whenever I put a video up on YouTube because YouTube will not always notify you about every video I post. 
I also have a Patreon where you can support me for as little as $2 a month. Those who support me on Patreon get access to all of my content one to two weeks early. And as soon as I reach my first support goal, I will begin giving away one doll every single month to a patron. So be sure to check out my Patreon. It's usually in the end cards at the end of the video. And I always have it linked in the description box below. And those who support me on the Fairy Godparent tier, in addition to what I just mentioned, also get a sticker sent to them every single month of one of my dolls and a shout out in every single YouTube video I make. So shout out to Road to Eric Fan and my anonymous fairy godparents. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.